what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today we will continue with our bhagavad gita series and today i am going to start the prayers of queen kunti which is very uh, important because it is there in the first canto of the shrimad bhagavatam and those prayers are highly 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 essential for us to come in the mood of understanding what the gita is all right because if we just read the gita if you just skim through it skim through the verses memorize all the 700 verses then at the end we may realize we didn't uh, know much about the gita yes because we have to come in the right mood and in the right spirit to understand the gita so for that it is very essential that we come in contact with the words of great personalities like kunti maharani for example here and we all know who kunti is yes she is the mother of the pandavas so I'll be starting this series from now on, Queen Kunti's prayers, and it will go long, long, long time. <laughs> so till that time, um, it is essential that we understand what Kunti uh, Devi is trying to tell us. Yes, and especially Lord Krishna's importance is very much stressed here. I have the first canto of Bhagavatam opened in my laptop, so I am hovering down again and again to see the beautiful prayers, and I am going to start now. So in this. There are different references about Lord Krishna and about how uh, Lord Krishna is the supreme and then about how one should be humble, how we should try to understand what's there in the scriptures and how should we imbibe that inside us, how should we imbibe the spirit. As the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Mahajano yena gata sapanta, which means that we cannot imitate the words and the actions of the great personalities but we can try to follow in their footsteps yes so that is why it is very essential that we hear from great personalities and then we will understand how the Gita is progressing all right and yes if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and if you want me to make any other video on any other topic then please let me know all right so here it is queen kunti's prayers start so i will go with the first verse it is in the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam in the eighth chapter 18th verse so basically what's happening here is queen kunti she uh, the kurukshetra war is over yes oh my god the gita is not yet started and the war is over <laughs> so basically what's happening is after the kurukshetra war ends uh, Queen Kunti goes uh, to see Lord Krishna when he's leaving for Dwarka. Yes, so Lord Krishna decides that it's high time now I go to my uh, city, my kingdom. And then uh, Kunti Maharani comes and she stops him. Yes, and then she starts singing these prayers, the beautiful prayers. All right, so here you go, 1.8.18. I'm giving the references because sometimes people behave like scientific conferences and they're asking, oh, from which uh, page of which scripture did you use this verse? So here it is, first canto, 8th chapter, 18th verse. All right, so there you go. And yes, before I begin, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Yes, all right. Kunti Uvacha Namasse Purusham Twadyam Ishwaram Prakrute Param Malaksham Sarva Bhutana Mantar Bahir Avasthitam Namasse Purusham Twadyam Ishwaram Prakrite Param Ishwaram Prakrite Param Alaksham Sarva Bhutana Mantar Bahir Avasthitam Translation is as follows Queen Kunti Srimati Kunti said O Krishna she is addressing Lord Krishna here I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. <laughs> so now is the purport. Srimati Kunti Devi was quite aware that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, although he was playing the part of her nephew. So. Kunti Devi knew that Lord Krishna is God. He is the supreme personality of God. But he was behaving as if he is the nephew of Kunti. Yes. So, but she was aware that he is God. She was not taking him cheaply or she was not misunderstanding that. Oh, maybe he is just like one of us. Yes. Such an enlightened lady would not commit a mistake by offering obeisances unto her nephew. Because she is senior to him. Much, much senior. One generation senior. So, uh, you don't offer obeisances, no? pranam to your juniors. The juniors will offer to you. But here, she, although she is one generation above Lord Krishna, she is still offering obeisances because she knows that I may be 
on a material level i may be senior to uh, lord krishna but uh, he is god ultimately yes so i must offer him obeisances and that is why it's written she could not have committed a mistake by offering obeisances unto her nephew therefore she addressed him as the original purush beyond the material cosmos so lord krishna is beyond the material cosmos he is not under the rules and laws and regulations although all living entities are also transcendental they are neither original nor infallible which means the living entities are also spiritual like lord krishna is there is no doubt about it but they are not infallible which means that they have the tendency to fall down to materialistic uh, propensities yes because they can indulge in materialistic propensities and because of that the uh, living entity undergo suffering the living entities are apt to fall down under the clutches of material nature but the lord is never like that so just because the living entity can fall down into material uh, uh into this material world doing indulging in materialistic activities but lord krishna doesn't do like that yes although he is uh behaving as if he is like one of us but he is never entangled like we are in the laws of karma in the vedas therefore he is described as the chief among all living entities nityo nityanam chetanas chetana nam this is one of the another uh references to other parts of the scriptures so he is described as the chief of all living entities then again he is addressed as ishwara or the controller yes so ishwara the word ishwara means controller the living entities or demigods like chandra and surya are also to some extent ishwara but none of them is the supreme ishwara or the ultimate controller so lord krishna is the ultimate controller yes he is above all the surya chandra vayu he is parmeshwara or the super soul he is both within and without antar bahir avasthitam you are bahira and antara also you are inside and outside <laughs> he is parmeshwara or the super soul he is both within and without although he was present before shrimati kunti as her nephew he was also within her and everyone else so she had a very special privilege to see uh, god himself standing in front of her although as lord krishna says in the gita ishwara sarva bhuta nam riddeshe arjuna tishthati i am situated in everybody's heart as the uh, as the super soul yes as the parmatma the 400 vishnu form but now she had the privilege to see lord krishna directly in front of her yes so she was the most luckiest woman on earth <laughs> in the three worlds actually not on earth he is both within and without although he was present before kunti marani as her nephew he was also within her and everyone else in the bhagavad gita 15.15 15 chapter 15 verse the lord says i am situated in everyone's heart and only due to me one remembers forgets and is cognizant etc so lord uh, krishna is telling here that because of me matta smritir gyanam apohanam cha so smriti is remembrance gyanam is knowledge and apohanam is forgetfulness so sometimes we are sitting in a exam and we are thinking oh what was the answer of this question we forget so that is because of our karma krishna makes us forget that yes so he is the source of remembrance forgetfulness both <laughs> though all the veda through all the vedas i am to be known because i am the compiler of the vedas and i am the teacher of the vedanta so this verse is there vedasya sarver aham eva vedyo vedanta kritve navi deva cha aham yes some some verses i remember so this is the verse where lord krishna says that through all the vedas i am to be known so conclusion of all the vedas is that you understand god that is what lord krishna is telling here which is you understand me and i am the compiler of the vedas because vyasdev was the one who compiled the vedas and he is a shaktavesh avatar a plenary expa- uh, so, sorry he is a shaktavesh avatar i don't know how to translate that in english there is no translation i guess for shaktavesh but but he is an expansion shaktavesh avatar is a normal living entity who is empowered by krishna especially by lord vishnu so that he behaves as he is as good as lord vishnu so vyasdev is one of the shaktavesh avatars parshuram is also one of them yes literary incarnation as they say i think that's the word which is used here i am the teacher of the vedanta so he is also the teacher queen kunti affirms that the lord although both within and without all living entities is still invisible yes so this uh, means that he is physically also invisible sometimes most of the times <laughs> and sometimes even if he is standing in front of you you may not be able to see him because you are not in the right mood any examples here yes yes there are so many examples duryodhana is the epic epic example for this because 
he always saw lord krishna yes duryodhan shakuni karna and dushasan these four they always saw lord krishna face to face just like yudhishthir arjun nakul sahadev and kunti were seeing but they did not take him seriously and that is why they perished the lord um, the lord is so to speak a puzzle for the common man that is why common man they keep asking oh if god is there why he doesn't uh, why he doesn't show himself to us no? so that's what is written here god is a puzzle for the common man queen kunti experienced personally that lord krishna was present before her yet he entered within the womb of uttara to save her embryo from the attack of ashwatthama's brahmastra so ashwatthama had discharged a brahmastra to kill the son of abhimanyu who was in the womb of uttara abhimanyu's wife so kunti devi is conscious of this fact that although krishna is standing in front of him but he protected parikshit who was the son of um, abhimanyu in uttara's womb so how can that happen somebody is here and then he protects you also right so that shows that he's got queen kunti experienced yeah the lord krishna was personally present but he also protected the embryo queen kunti was herself puzzled about whether shri krishna is all pervasive or localized <laughs> in fact he is both he receives but he receive but he reserves the right of not being exposed to persons who are not surrendered souls so if we do not surrender to god we cannot see him which does, which means that even if he is visible in front of us we will feel oh what's so great about you, you know there is nothing special about you that's how duryodhana used to behave duryodhana whenever he used to see krishna he used to feel what's so great about him there's nothing much great okay so he reserves the right of not being exposed to persons who are not surrendered so that means if we do not have surrender in our heart towards god then even if he's standing in front of us we can't see him so this question that if god exists why can't i see him doesn't work <laughs> this uh, this checking curtain is called maya or the maya energy of the supreme lord and it controls the limited vision of the rebellious soul it is explained as follows so now this uh, statement means that this illusory energy yes the maya energy which is there that covers the soul the soul thinks oh i don't need god i am happy myself i have a beautiful wife i have a handsome husband i have a rich husband i have a kid who is intelligent he always comes first in the exam yes my father is an is officer my father is a politician yes my grandfather was in the army of netaji subhash chandra bose or he was in the army of hitler so i am from a great family you see i have these people yes i have my best friends i have my girlfriend i have my boyfriend so i don't need anybody actually so that's the illusion which the illusory energy maya devi she puts the curtain yes and it controls the limited vision of the rebellious soul it is explained as follows all right so in the next verses that will again be explained so here kunti devi specifically mentioned that i offer my obeisances to you although you are on a material sense you are above me uh, i mean i mean i am above you but spiritually you are god so i must offer you obeisances and you are unaffected by the qualities of material world so just because we are bounded by the laws of karma that doesn't mean that god is also within the law of karma all right so you exist both within and without everything and yet you are invisible to all so krishna is inside and also outside but yet people can't see even if he is visible sometimes to people like shakuni dushasana karana and duryodhana then they still don't take him seriously all right so that's what kunti marani wants to say here she is basically starting this by offering obeisances and in the next verses we will see how the illusory energy maya devi that catches the soul yes all right so that is it from my side i hope i could explain what kunti marani is trying to say and if you want a consultation then approach me to my website below and if you are new then please subscribe and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments okay wish you good luck in understanding the prayers of queen kunti all right Bye bye see you